Hello, <laughs> it's me, Len Hen. Been a long time. I haven't made a movie for a long time on painting, and uh, this is a bit of an experimental one. So I'm going to see what I can do to adjust the camera and the canvas and the paints and my voice and everything else, and maybe I'll get back into making more movies. I hope so. I found a nice big piece of canvas, which uh, happens to be about two foot long and nine inches high, this bit of canvas, and I've taped it off. And because I had to do the black on the background of my boards here, and it's the only colour I got today is black, so we'll be working in black. I wonder if I think that'll work. I'll try and get the paint out. I'm just using a, a spoon. Oops, squeeze it the right way, I'll get it. Yeah, there's a bit of black paint. There, that's the black. And then, I don't know what brand that is. That's, I'm in Thailand, so it's a, a Thailand brand of paint, I think. It could be an English brand, I'm not sure. I'm not going to say because I'm not sure. And this one is a Thailand paint. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. And we'll put some white up there. We'll just paint something in black and white, just to make it easy for me. I'm not going to hurry, and I'm not going to profess to do a, a great painting. I have all my brushes, I haven't sorted through them yet. Um, they're looking okay. So we'll start by picking up plenty of white, and spread it across the top of the board like we usually do. That's a very thin paint, that one. It's, it's running on really quickly. Yeah, it's running on very very thin, very smooth, and I'm going to use a lot of it because I don't want it drying straight away. We'll get it on there quick. I don't know what I'll paint. We'll make it up as we go along. And because it's drying so quick, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'll grab another brush because I don't want to get this white brush dirty. Maybe that, whatever that is. And we'll start brushing from that corner. That's that's a black. That's a funny black. It seems to have a little bit of red in it. That black, that's okay. You get all different coloured blacks. You get green black, brown black, and that's a reddish black, blue black. That's a reddish black. That'll do. That's a bit of black in there. I'll bring it down just a little bit further. There. And uh, we need some more white paint. I'm going to add a white already. I'll put a lot up there as much as I can. And back to the cleaner brush because that brush got dirty. Okay, and we'll start up here. Put the white on first. That's my magic white coming straight out of the tube from, uh, I don't know, an acrylic paint from Thailand. Yeah. Very hot in Thailand at the moment. There's a lot of smog, and uh, that's why I'm indoors doing a bit of painting. Otherwise, I would be outside playing in the garden. And back to the other brush. Pick up a bit of, pick up plenty of paint when you're working like this, don't be, and, and put it on plenty of paint, in, 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 put it on, we're not going to be too fussy, and then we're going to do some nice clouds though, and uh, I don't want to get it all over my hands, that canvas is a little bit curved there, it's giving me a straight line up right, that, I don't want that, that's okay, at this stage, because I'm going to do it with my hands, I've got some clad wrap, and I'll put that around my finger, I don't want to really, I don't want the paint to get into my system. So a little bit of glad wrap on my finger. Well, I'll pick a bit of white paint up to start with, see how that goes. Yeah, that's a cloud. Mm. I can't lay my hand flat on there. I don't want to get paint on myself at the moment. Yeah. They look okay. I think they'll go all right. Well, I'll put the brush over them in a minute and get a nice moving look with the clouds. There we are. Uh, need a little bit of dark there to give us contrast. Need a bit of contrast. Can't just have white. And when you're working on your paintings, if you can get your sky white at the bottom, it looks so much better. Not so much on the outside. On the outside you can get away with a bit of dark. But in the middle you do want it white. Now with my dainty little whatever it is brush. What's that? About three inch or four inch? Uh, three inch, yeah, three inch brush. Just lightly. I'll try and get these clouds moving. There. 
Yeah. There's the wind going through the clouds. Pretty good, good. Just what we want here on there. I want to get rid of that. So that's our background. I don't know what I'm going to paint. What will we do? Um, let's do some mountains. We we'll use this normal brush, this normal artist brush. Pick up a little bit of dark, just a little bit of dark. No, not. I'll just put some there so I get the brush with a bit of colour on it, but not too much because I don't want this too dark and I don't want it too thick a paint. And I'm keeping my mountains low, deliberately keeping my mountains low. And I can scrub it in there and it'll look like a mountain. Uh, not too rough on top, just a little bit there. So there's almost no paint on the brush. This is the only time that I use no paint on the brushes when I've got to scrub something in like this. Now, see that mountain went darker, so we're going to have to bring it in front of the other mountain because the mountains always get darker as they come towards you. Uh, now, the two mountains look too much alike. Yeah, they look like something, I'm not going to say, but they look like that, so I'm going to put it a bit like that. Just a change of shape so we don't have everything regimented. Ookie, ookie, ookie. Looking good, I think. We'll see what happens next. Okay, now that little dark spot on there, I'll take it off there. I didn't want it on there, that's all. And now I'm going to go very dark by picking up lots of black paint. And I'm blocking the sides first. Whatever happens, it's going to be something in that shape. And uh, not too much along here. Not too much dark, because that's going to be a long way away. And then... Uh, and up this side. Not, not the same shape as over there. Not quite the same shape. There. Something like that. And here, I'll just give it a bit of colour and then I'll scrub it back a little bit because I don't want it dark. We want the contrast. The dark is forward and the light is back. So you put everything paler in the background. Yeah. Now I've been painting like this since 19, 1976, that's a long time ago, yeah, and uh, and my first video has come on the market about 1983, and then I made good ones in 1984 and 1985, and then they really hit the market. They were distributed by the Australian Artist Magazine and myself in shopping centres. And they were sold all over the world. And at the time, I painted in shopping centres and markets and all those things. Actually, I, I went over to Western Australia and I painted at the America's Cup in Western Australia. That was 1984, I think. I don't know, I might be wrong. Can't remember everything. I'm getting old. Now, if you see what I did there, I put those background trees in rather pale. Now, what I want to talk to you now about is anybody can do this. And of course you mightn't do it as well as I do it because I've been doing it for oh, nearly 50 years altogether. So um, I can see where I'm going wrong. I went wrong there, it was too dark, so I dabbed it, dabbed it once more and it went light again. And I could see immediately. And if you want to do this, do it, but don't expect to paint a perfect picture straight away. Like, Give yourself time and do it like as if you're dancing and no one's looking. You just paint away and enjoy yourself. So many people have learned to paint from what I've taught here. And I, I've got endless on any of my movies on YouTube. There's over a hundred there. You'll find that people have written in and said, thank you, Len, thank you, Len, all that. And the nicest ones I've got was... You saved me from alcoholism. I used to be depressed, but now I'm painting and all this sort of stuff. I'm happy, happy, happy. And I got one from the, the warder of the jail in the Philippines. And he said, Len, you've made so much joy with all the prisoners here. They're all painting from your videos. And I put them on the YouTube free. And I did that because there were so many yobos or whatever you want to call them who thought they could paint and thought they could make a lot of money out of it. And as far as I'm concerned, if you have a gift and you try to sell it, well, you're no good, and that's all there is to it. I think I've got a gift for doing this, 
I might have the gift of the gab sometimes, but um, I'd rather give it away. But I do need a bit of money. That's why I sell my little, I'll show you. I do need a bit of money. That's why I sell my little flash drives. They've got 70 lessons. They go for 22 hours on that flash drive. A lifetime of enjoyment. Yeah, I sell them on the internet. You can easily find me. Just Len Hen. Paint with Len. And you can find my flash drives. Okay, what am I on about? Okay, there's the painting at this stage. You can scratch. Sometimes, yeah, you can scratch. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Branches in these. I might scratch them in now because I'm too lazy to find the right brush. But you put little branches in the dark spots. See? In the dark spots. And, and I was talking about, now if you want to learn this, you do, you've do. you got to start off very simple and do it for your own enjoyment. So many people paint two or three pictures and away they've got to enter them in an exhibition or they've got to sell them for $400 or something. Don't bother that. Do it for your own in, enjoyment. It's fun. Now I'm lost. What am I doing? Okay. Do it. Brush flat and it's dirty, but that doesn't matter. Something I haven't got, I haven't got a rag. Oh, I forgot that. I usually work with a rag in the other hand. Okay, clean the brush and let's get something down here. I'll pick up a lot of white. In this area you're painting, like in this area, that's where you've got to have some white because that will attract the eye straight to the picture, straight away. It doesn't matter where it's a rock or a bird or, or a bit more than a bird but a bit of sky usually and a bit of reflection in the water under the sky so let's paint this and see what we get uh, is it good enough to put water yeah sometimes when it looks real flat you make them up as you go along put the brush on see what you get that looks like it could be water so let's see if we get good water there I want it whiter okay water yeah that looks like water just drag it down and if it doesn't, you can change it into something else because with this ornamental painting, we're making it up as we go along. It doesn't have to be perfect. You do it for fun. Yeah. And over the years, like lately I'm starting to see how a lot of my students are blossoming. Some of their stuff is so remarkable. My son's been doing stuff that I, I can't even imagine doing. I wouldn't have the patience. I'm looking for my knife, but I don't think I've got my knife. I used to have a painting knife. Mmm, there's one. No, it's a pair of scissors. Not much fun. Uh, aha, found it. A painting knife. A painting knife, where are we? There we are. A painting knife has a crank. A palette knife is flat, hasn't got that crank in it. So, and you get one that you like. See, that's flexible. It's about a good size for a normal painting. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put that bank along there. I'll see if I can get it in one go. I've picked up some dark and some light and we'll just put it on there. That's pretty thick that paint. It did come out in places and it didn't come out in other places. That's okay. When you're working with a knife you must wipe it clean every time you pick up paint. Otherwise if you pick up paint with a dirty knife you get the dirty colour that's on the knife. You don't get the nice fresh paint colour. So we're going to touch that up a bit in that. In that. Yeah. Well, what's the best bit of water? Uh, I don't like them reflections, a bit too dark. But we can cover them over with some white and see what they look like there. I'll put some white lines on it. Yeah, looks alright. That'll do. Okay, back to the brush. Pick up some dark. I'll put the dark on first. See what happens then. And we come in here. See how that dark throws the background right back. It makes things look close, near and far. This time I don't usually do this. But let's put all the dark on first. Just for fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In traditional landscape painting, they put all the darks on first and then you work lighter, lighter, lighter. They don't do it so much these days, but people, my great granddad on my mum's side, he was a uh, scenic artist for the theatres. And that's what he did. He used to draw the picture out, everything, castles and lions and everything, draw them all out in pencil. 
and then he'd put all the darks in and then put all the lights in then come lighter and lighter until you've got the highlights which which you want you've got to place the highlights where it catches the eye you'll see now if you look at a painting if it catches your eye straight away you'll see why it's because of the light and I was talking about my students they're shining but something that really frustrates me is so many of them keep their waterline up here in the middle of the thing and it looks terrible to me it looks good to them and if you have your waterline down you get much more sky and let, believe me sky sells and it looks more real okay good old fan brush if you're buying a fan brush i notice they've got new ones on the market and they're made of nylon or something and they're too soft with this type of painting you need a firm fair brush a firm fair a firm firm brush yes we nearly got that right when i get into making these movies properly i must speak correctly yes I've been told I can't even speak correctly by someone and I'm still offended yeah okay that's the grass that's easy to do just just do it look it's fun and if you don't get it right don't worry you get it right next time and, uh, of course I keep saying yeah I do it. I can do it easy it looks looks easy but I've had nearly 50 years of practice so Actually, I've had the last two years off. I've had a severe health problem and now they've fixed it. The only thing they didn't do, they took the top off my head. They got rid of my bald spot, which I'm really glad of. I found my little tiny, tiny, tiny brush. This is not a good one. It's gone a bit, a little bit stiff because I haven't looked after it. That's just a cheap brush. But let's do some long, nice long lines. Need a bit more paint. There. I must not use that spoon for anything nowadays. Uh, okay, load the brush. Th these trees here, they still need a few more branches in them, but I won't put them in yet. Now, what do we want? We want, let's cut across the water with a nice long line. There. One. Yeah, bring your trees right up into the sky. Now, this is your eye level when you're painting a picture. And remember, if you were standing on that other bank, your eye would be about there. Therefore, your eye level is that height on the tree. So when you're painting trees like this, try and remember that your eye level is about above the bank on the other side. Because I see a lot of trees that only come up here and they little stumpy trees here. It means that either the tree is a miniature tree or you're very very tall to be have your eye level up there so a bit hard to explain it here but when I make my more my further movies I'll explain that entirely about that this paint's running, running rather well I did put a bit of water in it before I painted the background here on the on there so yeah now the secret with this is you hold it like a pendulum just let it flop around just flop it on your canvas and pull it up and twist it around and you'll get a nice little thin branch look see just like that thin branch if you hold it and hold it like that you're going to end up with a mess if the branch has got knobs on it that's all right trees are like that you get trees with knobs on them all the time okay and because you can't see little bits of the branches that's okay too because if you go into the scrub and you look at something, you look at a nice scene, quite often you can't quite see things and you have to move to see it. So, yeah, remember that. Don't fiddle around. Just put stuff where you want it. That's enough on that side. It's not really because it's unbalanced. It's got this space here. So I've cut my picture into too many pieces. I don't want it like that. Yeah, I think I'll have to put another tree here. To This, this one will probably have to be bigger. Give you the feeling of not having the picture chopped up in little pieces. There, this, this side. There. I'm not going to go to too much trouble. I could. That is not a bad picture. It looks okay. 
That's okay. What have I got over here? Oh, let's have a good painting knife one. Yeah, let's do the painting knife job. Okay, so I'll pick up some paint on the knife. And what I did, I picked up the paint like that because I want the dark on the outside of the tree and the light on the inside of the tree to catch your eye to bring it into the picture. And this tree starts right up here. I'm not going to wreck that. That's a nice cloud there. I'll leave that. I'll start right up here on the masking tape, bring it down, then squash it on. And then we have a nice tree there. It looks like a gum tree. Clean the knife. Uh, pick up some more paint. And we'll have a, a branch here. And a nice big butt on it. There. There's a gum tree on that side. So that's not a bad lesson. I'll show you how to go about painting sky, mountains, background trees, water, trees. It's just techniques. I'm picking up some more paint. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I think I'll put a branch somewhere. Let's have a branch here. Uh, I'll try and miss those clouds because I like them. Let's have a branch about there. And then we'll come down here. Yeah, and sculpture the tree on. It's fun. I need some clean white paint. Just a little bit of clean white paint up there. Clean my knife. Uh, pick up a little bit of that white paint on the knife. I just want a little bit of white paint. I don't want a lot. There. And as I bring it down here, if I'm very careful, a little touch on the outside of the bits of paint and give it some brilliant bits of bark hanging off the tree. Just here and there. I think the nice, I think it's got dirty now. Oh no, I've got another little bit there. And rather than waste that bit of paint, we'll put some rocks on the ground there. There. Now notice everything's sloping in. Everything's coming in. The trees are coming in. The water's in the middle. The light's in the middle. The tree's coming this way. That's what we want. And now with this brush, we'll twiddle it in two colours and get a branch here somewhere. Coming back into the picture, let's do it again. Into the picture. There. Oh, didn't have any paint on my brush there. There, that's okay. And a little bit up here. Not too much, don't get carried away. And what I haven't got on that tree is branches crossing. See, you always when you look at a tree, there's always a branch, or many branches, that go across each other, that go behind each other and that. If you paint, you paint your tree and all the branches, none of them cross, it looks like a pressed flower. So do that, make sure you've got a branch crossing. And if you muck it up, don't matter because I'll show you what we do with it then. Okay, now I'll try to keep those nice clouds, but this is what you do if you muck your branches up. You get some dark paint and light paint has two colours on the brush at once. This was my idea. I know there's a lot of people doing it now. Everywhere I look, there's these paintings with that dab brush stroke and two colours on the brush at once. And I can tell a mile away that they learn of me. And it makes me very happy because it makes them happy. And their happiness is my reward. I love to see people happy. There. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> there, just a few up there, not a lot. I'm, I'm getting a bit messy now. If I was doing a good job, I'd be very careful about what I'm doing now. But at the moment, it doesn't matter. It's just a nice painting. Just to break the ice and get painting again. And uh, what I'd like to do too is uh, translate a lot of my movies, my other movies, into different languages. And if there's anyone out there who would like to help me translate into different languages, I'd be so thankful. It'd be so good. Because uh, people in all different countries can enjoy them, which they do. A, lo a lot of people, I get feedback from all over the world. And quite a lot of the people are non-English speaking people. And uh, from everywhere, from South America, from Russia, from uh, Philippines, from... China, India, India a lot, yeah. So, now, what's missing? 
The only thing missing, I think, is a few fine branches in the background there. We'll see if we can get them in. Maybe, maybe one up there and the reflection of it there. A few fine branches there. And over this side there was a few needed. Just a couple there. Not a lot, just a couple. There. Yeah. Okay. Now, you see these bits that are missing. It doesn't matter. You take the picture as a whole. You don't worry about the bits missing. I'm going to sign this now. I'll sign it over this side this time. Oh, it's dried too much. I was going to scratch my name in there. I'm going to have to write it in. Hope it fits. Oop. Dyslexic. Can't even spell my own name. Anyway, that's good enough. I know it's me. Good, good, good. We'll take the masking tape off and see how it looks. Yeah. Now, if you have a go at this and you have any problem, you can find me. I'm not hard to find. Len Hender, it's, it's an unusual name, H-E-N-D. And, uh, I've got a few websites and things. I'm on Facebook. You can find me. And if you're having a problem with your paintings, let me know. Let me know and I'll have a look. And uh, if you can buy the videos, I'll be very happy. That's the flash drives. It's uh, $70 Australian for 70 lessons, which I think is about the cheapest in the world. Uh, but if you can't afford it, let me know too. And maybe we can work something out because uh, I want everyone to enjoy what I do. Hope you have a good day, people, because I certainly am. See you later. Bye, boy.